at the villa of the Baron de Signac. I had ladies in attendance, fire opal pendants, liaison. What's happened to them? Liaison today. Elaine Stritch and Bernadette Peters, uh, what a privilege to have you two on the show. Thank you so much for coming on. And I must say, you look amazingly svelte and incredible. Uh, you really do put me to shame. How do you do it? How do you do it? Look well, at you. Well, from what angle? <laughs> You really are, you know, your figure is amazing. You walked in you, in your At Liberty costume. You look fabulous. <laughs> it's very observant of you. I, um, I just can't. Let me put it this way. Do you remember my first line, and that would be asking too much, my first line in Elaine Stritch at Liberty was a line that my dad uh, made me aware of. He doesn't know where he got it from, but it's one of, we was sitting around with George Wolfe, the director. George Siebel. Yeah. yeah. And we were trying to, I we were trying to think of a really good line to start the show off. Mm. To telling my life story, whatever you want to call it. And I suddenly remember this line of my dad's. And it's so true. It's so true. It's so honest. It's so on the money that the audience exploded. I've never had such a thrill. Boy, did I get a right number. I chose the best line possible. And it's another way right today of explaining about how do we do it mm. and what we would comp what we might or what Bernadette might or what I might complain about eight shows a week on Broadway. This is the problem and here's the line. Well, it's like the prostitute once said, it's not the work, it's the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> now wow. think about it. Oh my God! Just think about it. Isn't that extraordinary? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like... doing a little night music. No, That's no. fun. Yes. But yes. the costume, yeah. the scenery, mm. the makeup, the getting to the theater, all that stuff. Yeah. To get looking like you should look when you walk out on that stage at eight o'clock is no short order. I'm mm -hmm. telling you. Let's talk about a, a little night music. Uh, I was just blown away by the production. You two in the show are incredible. There was so much hype for this casting, and yet this is one case where these unreal expectations were completely realized. Um, was there a lot of pressure? I don't know what you heard coming in. I mean, what you know, how much of the buzz you was reaching you, but. Was there a lot of pressure on the on the two of you to realize, live up to all of this? I didn't realize there were unreal expectations. I mean, you know, it's funny. You get a job and you and you get to work. Really, I mean, I know there was. I mean, I was excited because Elaine was going to do it, and and we thought this was good casting, great casting, good cat, good casting. You mm -hmm. know, um, I didn't know much about the role. I did see the show. You know, it wasn't a role that I had had my sights on because I, this, she sings really one and a half songs, and I usually learn about a role through the music. So mm -hmm. I never really investigated this. Mm -hmm. Elaine was the one that said, "You're going to be. This is a perfect role for you." But anyway. Um, uh, so I'm I'm sort of unaware of what 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 the hype was. You know, I know that it was time for us to get to work, and that's what we did. The internet, you know, chat rooms were oh, just it. buzzing. <laughs> Do you pay any attention to that? I don't know how to. I don't know how to work them. I don't uh, know internet yeah. and me just come to the parting of the ways. Let me tell you what I think happened. Okay. Not that this doesn't happen. Plenty on Broadway, but there was something about. Huh, from my point of view, Bernadette, she has, pure and simple, she has enormous, and this shouldn't embarrass her, I don't think it will, she has enormous talent, and so do I. Mm. So you put two broads like that together, they are beyond all the bullshit. There's no, there's no jealousy. Yeah. 
of an artist of that caliber. That's ridiculous. Now, you had never worked together. No. Oh. So, this is... Benefits. Benefits. <laughs> yeah. You know, appreciating each other from, at the benefit. From afar. Know, from right. A, right. But, I mean, this has been... I mean, Elaine's been nothing but supportive uh, of me and I of her right from the beginning. And I love her. Yeah. I mean, she's brilliant. You know, yeah. I learned so much from her. She's now, brilliant. you can't knock having that around. Saying that a couple of times. Yeah, and, hearing and, that all the time. And especially on yeah. interviews. <laughs> then we are dumped on a cast that is brilliant. Yes. Yeah. I, would I say. mean, every yeah. single number is like stops. The, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've never seen anything like it. Well, in my life. now, Bernadette, I have to ask you, you. You had never before this experience. You'd never gone into a show as uh, a replacement. Replacement? No, I never. Had. And you know no. the implications of that. I mean, it is a it is a brilliant show, and and it's a, a great role. But was there any hesitation on your part at all? And I, and I know it was Stephen Sondheim himself who had suggested you yeah. for it. Yeah. No, because these shows and these roles are now have become classics. You know, and you go, I want to play that role sometime in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. This is the opportunity to play it. I want that experience. Let's play it. These are like classics. These are now, even though they're, they're musicals, but now they've become part of, you know, I think, you know, a classic. Mm -hmm. So that's true. And it was a very brief, uh, relatively uh, brief rehearsal period for you. How mm -hmm. daunting uh, was it? I mean, I, I, I know there was some issues with uh, memorizing lines. Uh, I, I'm, I don't know how younger people do it but you know to to have to you know take on that incredible challenge must have been well that I, I kind of got sore uh, at at that because uh, as george wolf said to me off stage uh, at dinner one night when i said that um, there had been talk about me not m knowing my lines he, he looked across the table and he said, Elaine, you've had two weeks, of, one week of previews. How do they expect you to, you know, to come, learn a part like that yeah. and be flipping about it, be having a ball with it, being in control of it? I mean, knocking them dead. You can't do that. But let me it's tell you, even with her go trying to find her, she's still knocking, she was still knocking them dead because she's such a great actress. She knows what the intention of the line was and the audience understood what the intention was. Yeah. And they still laughed and loved her and, and all that. Yeah. And that was very brave of you because you knew you were going to be struggling. I was scared Yeah, to that's very brave. Scared to death. But that. she still pulled it off. Masterful timing, I have to say. You nailed every laugh line. Every I mean, I wouldn't and made up some other. Ones. I wouldn't call it a punchline. <laughs> made up some. You did what you had to do, yeah. and you you knocked him dead. No, I don't mean she made up. She added to the the book. I'm saying that she got laughs where you don't expect the laughs. Yes, right. yeah. You don't have to add to Hugh Weider's book because it's yeah. just brilliant. It's it's brilliant. Uh, Elaine May came to the show last night. You saw. Yeah. And. Um, she said a great line. She said, Elaine, you landed all the pauses. <laughs> and we will take a pause here as well. Tune in next week for part two of Roma's interview with Elaine Stritch and Bernadette Peters. It's time. And welcome back. Celebrated actresses Elaine Stritch and Bernadette Peters are currently reuniting with Stephen Sondheim on Broadway in the 2009 revival of A Little Night Music. We now bring you part two of my chat with these legendary divas of the stage. Stephen Sondheim is, is I would say, a constant in, in both your professional yeah, lives. Thank God. Um, mm -hmm. You with company and, and Ladies Who Lunch, and you, you did the cabaret show singing Sondheim, and of course, this is your fourth uh, I think fourth Broadway so production with Sondheim. Yes, it was Sunday and Into the Woods and Gypsy, Gypsy and this and one. Now, yeah, little. I did it, and then I, I did Anyone Can Whistle and a, and a um, benefit. Mm -hmm. How do you rank these uh, <laughs> experiences? I know I'm sure it's like picking a child, you know, the, a favorite child. But how how do you, oh. in terms of fulfillment or Out you of know, all in terms the of challenges? Those shows? Yeah, <gasps> you can You know, you which one is easier? Maybe I easier? can ask that. Yeah. We're, we're, <laughs> That's that's not even a word that applies, right? I would guess. I, can I guess? Yeah, go ahead. I, w I would guess the one you're doing now. Is the easiest? Why? Because it's more because suited it's, to uh, her. It's, uh, it's, she's having an awfully good time. Yes. I think it should not be allowed. 
about you? Well, you're having a good time, <laughs> aren't you? I'm starting to. You start. I'm starting That's what I was going to ask. You know, with this abbreviated um, rehearsal period, uh, um, are you in a comfort level now where you, you feel you can coast Beginning a little bit? Beginning to be. Yeah. Yeah, you're putting Wait, the stamp on it. I'm laughing a little bit at what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm enjoying it. You are enjoying it. Yeah, and I get, yeah, I, uh, it's just a, it's a lovely story to be involved in. It is. It's it a is. real once upon a time type script. Yeah. I just love it. I now, I have to it. say that the two of you are acting the hell out of your iconic numbers, uh, liaisons, of course, and send in the clowns. And um, how difficult was it for you, Bernadette, to take on that song, which people, you know, have such an identification with through the years, um, and I, I know that there's that expression, analysis leads to paralysis. So I don't, I don't want you to, you know, break it up too much for well, us. That's but why I actually, I mean, the first word of the first sound of encouragement I got was Elaine wanted a read through of the show with the whole cast the first mm -hmm. day, the first day of rehearsal. Mm -hmm. And when I finished sending the clown, she went, oh, Bernadette. So I went, okay, so I'm on the right track. <laughs> it was an encouraging, you know, an encouraging uh, comment. Mm -hmm. but, but really, I didn't know much about the song, and I really, the song comes out of the scene so beautifully. Mm -hmm. I let the song tell me what it was trying to say mm -hmm. and what, what, what was happening. But do you it. think about it, or is it just a, sort of a natural process where it's instinctive at, at the moment? Well, you, you sort of, like, like I say, I, I know what country I'm going to. I don't know what's going to happen when I get there. And that's what you want. You want to be surprised. And you have to leave the pockets open to go, oh, my God, I didn't forget about that experience. That's what happened. That's, that's what that's about. Oh, mm -hmm. my God, I didn't realize that, you know. So it's great. It's great to have, be experiencing it for the first time, which is what you pray for, then the audience can also be experiencing it for the first time. And with liaisons, um, that's, the difficulty with that number is the Hardest song I've ever sung in my life. There's an emotional detachment when you sing it, and yet you have to reveal, eventually, a vulnerability beneath the bravado. Right. Mm -hmm. um, what was the creative process there? Well, for generally you? speaking, that is, that's the way we that's the way we live on. I think uh, we and, and and accept and surrender to age is the same way that she is accepting the the uh, the uh, deal she made in her life. Her life was one big deal after another. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It really was. And then she, this wonderful writer, gives the actress a chance at the end of the song to do a scene like she's got sending the clowns. I've got a scene with my granddaughter mm. that tells that, you know, I I gave up maybe uh, honest to God true love for all this. Right, all this fall and wrong. Cortis, cortis. Right. Sonian, <laughs> how do you say it? At the end of the show, right? That's yeah, the, end of the, that, show. the scene beautiful. with my granddaughter yeah. when I say there was a guy. And the charming thing about this book is the way that old lady talks to that kid. Mm. It's the cutest thing in the world. <laughs> the Talking about line. her lovers. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. from a Catholic girl from Michigan. <laughs> Come on. Before we go, uh, I, I just want to get your future plans. Uh, you are contracted to stay in the show at least through November. Uh, can we... Sometime in November. Can, we, can in we hope November. that you will extend? Um, that would depend on a lot of things, you know, how you feel when that time gets here. And also, I, I think you're doing, she is contracted. I'm not going to say anything, but I think she has a contract coming up. We had heard rumors about Follies. Follies? Follies, you know the musical. <laughs> oh, where wow. are you? Rumors of Follies. Yes. Where? At the Kennedy Center that you may oh, be. Oh, that could be. But you know, if, if good that, idea. If that happens, that wouldn't really start rehearsals till April. So. So you're available to could stick be. with the uh, night yeah, music if I could, company. I'd like to. Okay. Because well. this is, I have to say, this is one of the best. I can't believe this book is 
the audience loves it. It's so funny. And the voices up there on the stage are so gorgeous. And the music is so gorgeous. And it's so touching. You, you watch those kids backstage, that cast, get ready to take their curtain call. And they all look like they've got the lead. <laughs> <laughs> it is so terrific. Beware. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Elaine Stritch, what a joy to have you on the show. Well, and Bernadette it's Peters, it's always a great pleasure. So For me, too. Thank you. And just a note, right after we taped the interview, it was confirmed that Bernadette Peters will, in fact, star as Sally in the Kennedy Center's production of Follies in the spring of 2011. So another thing that we need to look forward to. That is it for this edition of On Stage. For producer Frank DeLella and all of us here, we want to thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you back on stage next week. tonight. I ask if I could, I thank the company for being so welcoming and to this sensitive, brilliant musical comedy that's on 48th Street. And that's what it is. It's a killer. It was a whirlwind of a rehearsal period. Sondheim joined us and it was like master classes really hearing what the show's really truly about. It was really a thrilling experience. And I think the cast that's been with it felt the same because it was really morphing into this new animal. It just gets richer and richer and funnier. And I, I think this is the most moving incarnation. Taking nothing away from our first cast, this is a very, very special production. Being on stage with these sensational actresses it's just such a blessing. It's a joy. It's such a beautiful show. It's a gift to be able to do this role. Alexander Hansen, my partner in this, you know, he's made it so easy for me, and I don't know if I could have done it without him. Particularly if you're playing sort of intimate parts opposite each other, that you just hope that there's a chemistry between you. You hope there's a trust. You hope that you're going to get on okay, you know what I mean? And she's so easy. We've just, we've hit it off, and it's a real, real thrill. Real thrill. Please join me at the Walter Kerr Theatre to see a little night music. It's a beautiful show. Great cast. I guarantee that you will love it, and you will come out richer for the experience. the show that everyone talks about has spoken about this role for such a long time and I finally discovered it myself and a chance to play this beautiful beautiful part I get overly excited about playing this part and I've got to watch myself that I don't go too fast you know take it easy nice and easy does it every time so that's what I have to watch out for it's a great book with a great score it's a great show and I get to work with Elaine every night and Elaine and Madame Armfeld I mean it's uh, it's gonna be a, a privilege a thrill and a privilege we want you to come and, and experience this with us so please come Another to this beautiful girl. show with yeah. us Tony Award winners Bernadette Peters and Elaine Stritch are joining the Broadway revival of A Little Night Music on Tuesday, July 13th. Theater Mania spoke with the ladies about joining the show and working with composer lyricist Stephen Sondheim. What's it like as an actress playing an actress? <laughs> oh, good question. Yeah. Well, you know a lot of things because of, you know, being on the road. I was on the road when I was 13. And uh, it gets, it can get very 
old. You can get very, you get very homesick and lonely, you know. And there's the joy in the performing that part when you're on stage and you're and you're doing the role. But then there's the part where you go home to your hotel room and uh, your empty hotel room, or your you're not with your as in Desiree's case with her daughter, who's so important to her now. She was a very independent woman that taught her to be independent, so she went away to be independent. You know? And there's sadness in both of them. There's sadness in Desiree. A lot. Of, well, <clears throat> what actress, what good actress hasn't got that going? You know, it's not all uh, laughs. You know, it's tough. Do you both understand Desiree's need to settle down? I think some people have and some people don't. Well, she... I, I remember saying to you once on the phone, she falls in love like Simon Senior, eh? you know, hard. When Desiree falls in love, it's, you know, mm -hmm. mm, it's heavy furniture. Which is why she probably has the affairs with the Dimwitter guys that can't go anywhere. Right. It, can't, it can't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, right, that that right. relationship. Right. <laughs> She's safe, you know. Uh, <clears throat> oh, boy. Elaine. You're such a physically active person on stage, but Madame Armfeld spends the whole time on stage in a wheelchair. Oh, Is that, that going to be a <coughs> challenge for that's you? That's under discussion at the moment. You work with the director, and I've been working a little bit with, um, with uh, Trevor Nunn. And, uh, you know, this is hard, too, because we get a weekend with Trevor, and, and then we work with Seth, who interprets him and also who's talented in, in his own right, yes. I can tell. Steve takes a lot of thinking, yes. you know, a lot of thinking. And when you're finished thinking it through is when you start to have fun. And you think, oh, okay, I know what this is about. And, and then you don't. You don't mm -hmm. because it's about really something. Yeah. <laughs> Not something, something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and you go, oh my gosh, I didn't realize, you know, what, what that was about. And it's so exciting to, to try to get there and to try to, you know, to figure that out. See, I, I never think I really play a part until maybe three months is over. I feel like I really got it, you know, and that's a good feeling. You're, you do things without even thinking of them, you know. You're just so relaxed. You own the stage. You're so relaxed. You know, you, get, you, you begin to get nervous at home. <laughs> you know what I mean? I feel, I feel across and my bedroom is wrong. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I always say I'm getting out of life and getting back into show business. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's it. That's exactly what I mean. This life I'm getting out. <laughs> <laughs> when you get him, you got him. When you finally get that in your head and the words in your head and see only you have to memorize the melody because it's intricate and it's exciting and it goes every place, you know? And when you get it, it when it begins to sound like a happy birthday to you, you know, to you, you're so familiar with it, that's when it flies, you know? But you've been through hell getting it in there like a melody that you've known all your life. Isn't it rich? Are we a pair? Me here at last on the ground You in mid-air 
send in the clouds Isn't it bliss Where are the clouds? Send in the clouds. And the villa of the Baron de Signac, where I spent a somewhat infamous year. At the villa of the Baron de Signac, I had ladies in attendance. Fire opal pendants, liaison. What's happened to them? Liaison today. Disgraceful. What's become of them? Some of them hardly pay their shoddy. Once was a rare champagne, is now just an amiable hawk. What once was a villa, at least is digs. What once was a gown with train, is now just a simple little frock. What once was a sumptuous feast, is figs. No, not even figs, raisins. Ah, uh, liaisons. You must meet my wife. If I must, yes, I must. A sea of whims that I submerge in, yet so lovable. In repentance, unfortunately still a virgin, <clears throat> but you can't force a flower. Don't finish that sentence. She's monstrous. She's frightened. Unfeeling. Unversed. She'd strike you as unenlightened. No, I'd strike her first. Her reticence, her apprehension. Her cross. No. Yes, no, you must meet my wife. Let me get my hand. And my knife.